Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of y'all didn't get it. Yeah. Okay, okay. Until we started to. When I got out there, I was like, Cypher, you're going to have to give everybody 120. He's mm-hmm. like, man, I'm just teaching righteousness right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, nah, we're going to have to get in it. You're going to have to give them mathematics. I don't care. We're going to have to spread mathematics out here. He's like, why me? And I'm like, because you're the best. You didn't do it. Right. He sound like me. That's how they used to hit me with all this responsibility. You and Cali, you know, you're the first one, and it's, they hit you with all this responsibility, and nobody wants to initially take that yeah, weight, yeah. you know? Like, but, you know, people choose themselves. Yeah. Especially with me, it was like, I never, and, I, and we went through stages, like I said, when I first started going to a law school in Mecca, I wasn't the sharpest blade in the drawer. I got knowledge in Pelon in, in October of 1987. By the time I moved back to Los Angeles, I, I had only had mathematics and stuff for maybe a couple of months, you know. So when I went there, you know, I, I you know the brothers around me had lessons and we was piecing it together and trying to put it together the best way we knew yeah, how because yeah. we didn't have no elders and we didn't know no better. When I got of age and I got a record deal and I started travel back to New York, I started going to a law school in Mecca and that's when I began to get the regiment, you know, because everybody had their regiment. It's almost like... You know, if you go up and deal with a Muslim or Orthodox Muslim, you know, if you're not praying five times a day and doing what Muslims do, you can't claim to be a Muslim. If you're a Christian, you deal with you deal with a, a charity. You know, you take your communion. You do what Christians mm-hmm. do. You know, five percent is we have a red regiment and we have a right of passage that you know that's responsible to us. And we have to make sure that we cherish that and that we pass that tradition on. You yeah, know, and people and, ma- and people knowing like what it is like, right. Mathematics, alphabet, and 120 lessons, man. That's our program, you know, and that's based, to me, that's the basics. And then the 120 isn't the end all, the be all. 120 is just the first place that you learn to use mathematics and alphabet. And I tell people this all the time because the lessons are Muslim lessons. They come out of the temple, the father brought them out the temple. Only reason that we study these degrees is because this is what he was studying when he came to the realization of himself. So if he's teaching other people, why not give them the same materials and the things that you were studying when you came to the realization? But the cornerstone of our teachings is supreme mathematics and supreme alphabet. That's the cornerstone of our teachings. 120 is just the first place you learn to use it at. In the same way, effort that you learn a 120 in, once you learn 120, that's just the blueprint. Yeah, now you apply that same effort and other things. You know, people, people mess that up where they think like, they think that once I get 120, I'm not going to use it again. What the fuck would you learn it for if you wasn't going to keep on using it? You know exactly. what I mean? So it, it, it gives you the perspective that was meant for the people that got in that time period to come to the awakening of themselves, right? But it also gave you the historical context by which all these things came to be so that once you woke up to who you are right now, in the present day time, you see how it came to be. You be like, okay, this is how the devil was made. This mm-hmm. is what he did to us, and this is what we we must do now. But we have a different approach to it, rather than approaching it as a religious text, which we gotta just internalize and then not do nothing else with. We take those principles and those lessons, and we through mathematics and alphabet, like basically draw out all the present day uses of it. Like, mm-hmm. okay, a trader made an interorientation 379 years ago from the date of that writing that this people would receive more gold and he was telling lies, right? Mm-hmm. And he got everybody scamming and hustling and you know what I mean? That's still going on right now. We got two presidential candidates that's doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. They willing to, you know what I mean? Tell you a story and tell you whatever you want to hear and some of us is going to go along with it. And we even got people that are considered leaders in our community that will sell us out. Because they, when there's a traitor, there's also a traitor. Like there's mm-hmm. two people, my brother I Tommy used to be on there all the time. There's always two people involved in any finagling type relationship. You know, it's one person that's, that's striving to bring the wrong into your community. Then you got one person that's a representative of your community that's with the bullshit. Right, that's allowing it. That's allowing it. And that's the jewel about 120 because what 120 is is that you're learning to interpret your life through the text. That's the jewel of 120. You're interpreting your life through the text. The reason why we learn to keep it on the dome and, and to memorize it is, is that understanding is going to come in time. You know what I'm saying? We have it on the dome so that as you live your life and you're going through various life experiences, when certain things happen, it pops up in your head. Oh, it's this. You have something to apply it to, some way to interpret it. You have a text that's here that you know on you met by memory that you're able to interpret the various situations that take place in your life. 
And that's the use of it. See what you were saying about um, making certain things so people in different parts of the world would, can relate um, more. That's what Cypher was trying to do at, at one point where mm -hmm. he was like, certain things, maths is just maths. That's, you know what I'm wow. saying, universal. But there's, there's some things that's very North American mm -hmm. that if there was certain, um, certain things, I don't know, put together so, like you said, a person from France right. with a Nigerian background, a person from the Caribbean right. could um, relate and gravitate more. See, this knowledge is perfect for people that didn't even know they had a history to know. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So everybody that got stripped of their knowledge of themselves through the process, we know it's the one to 36, where in our lesson it describes the transatlantic slave trade and it talks about how, you know, the people, not only was they brought over, but then they were stripped of everything that they once knew. And then the people back home didn't even know really what had happened to them, right? And then the end of this lesson tells you, now the people back home are finding out about all their lost cousins. Mm -hmm. So with, with, what I get out of that is you got lost cousins everywhere. I'm a lost cousin. You a lost cousin. He a lost cousin. Everybody, you know what I mean, is a lost descendant of this whole process. But at the root of it, was a devil just doing his thing. Right. And so now we are, what our common understanding is, oh, we all been through some form of PTSD mm -hmm. thanks to that motherfucker. Now we could all sit and talk about this motherfucker all day long, but that sounds like a victim. Mm -hmm. So in order to be a vic victorious rather than a victim, which is what we teach in the culture, it requires you to go deep into your history and find the godliness in this. Find the the, the how are we original like yo if you Nigerian you already know damn near like you you got it passed down by your grandpappy like he told you you know what I mean if you Kenyan you know if you Ethiopian you know but if you grew up in America shit I'm from Bangladesh motherfuckers ain't tell me <laughs> and I think the beauty of it in, in the high the court is because when you brought the book to me and was telling me about Jamaicans coming over in the area where you were at I think that applies to it because when we start getting into who is the original man and you get into the one in 36 and it says, my name is W.F. Muhammad, I came to Wilson, North America. These stories will transcend regardless of where you're at as far as original people mm -hmm. is concerned. Because when you brought that book to me and told me that history, you know, that's that experience. You're it's talking central. about who's the original man there. And then you're talking about Malik who came over here and his family came over here this year and these are the experiences. Right. That's the consciousness that exists over in that community. So it applies across the board when you have understanding because it still speaks to you. Initially it wasn't something that came to us here in the wilderness of North America, but it's something that applies to all the original people or indigenous people throughout the world. Because one of the key things when you deal with our Supreme not in the Supreme, when you deal with the 1 to 10, when he starts speaking about Asiatic within the original man, and, and within the knowledge degree of the 1 to 10, when he asks you who is the original man, Asiatic deals with the concept of us from the planet. Right. That's what Asiatic is about, because I might not call myself African or any other continent, because if I say that I'm this, then I deny original people that's in Cuba, I deny original people that's in... UK, I deny the original people, but when you say you're Asiatic, that's saying that we're talking about the, we come from the planet as a whole. Because every place that the Caucasian man went when he got there was always somebody darker than him here when he landed. <laughs> when he landed. You know what I'm saying? So, and the, these are the ways that we learn to interpret our lessons and so that it apply to everybody across the world. That's why you can get it. So you because talk, you build on the beginning it. of when you get into as a student as you enroll and then mm -hmm. you learn your connectedness with the global black family right. through that first lesson, mm -hmm. right? So you get in this coach you get the math and alphabet, so you have keys and tools to understand. Mm -hmm. So you'll never be a dummy again. Because the first thing you get, once you prove yourself worthy, see if you don't get math and I homie, did you fast before you got? Yeah, come on, man. Right. Everybody's supposed to fast before they get this, man. See, we had to go without food for three days mm -hmm. before we got this, right? That's part of cleaning yourself up. Right. That's what all that's about. And I didn't get it like that because I got on the streets with a cult where little bits and pieces had been left out. I got some things lost in translation. So when I found out about the tradition, I still went ahead and did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I wanted to go through it all the way. Right back in the days, I heard the gods shaving their heads and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. When you talk about the Blood Brothers and all that and stuff, that early history, you know, it was different things that was taking place that came to us forming this. You right. know, one of the things, one of the... Uh, the well, you know, we the only motherfuckers that survived the 60s? Yeah. Real shit. Yeah. We don't... 
See, we like this culture is a civil rights, human rights culture. Mm -hmm. All the old guys who now like, you know, they made peace to them. They they return to the essence right now, like as we speak. Mm -hmm. They civil rights icons. They human rights icons because from the '60s till now, they've been pushing liberation to the people non-stop, no paycheck, no recognition, no accolades. Sometimes motherfucker don't even like them. Right. A and righteous teacher, I'm doing it for decline. nothing. I'm doing it for nothing. And that's why, that's why I respect those that do it. So when people be like, oh, that's a bum. That's not a bum. That's a man that gave up everything mm-hmm. for this. Mm-hmm. And so in the beginning, you got to show yourself worthy. So first people go examine you and then you gonna go through whatever you go through. Some people gotta learn the history of this nation. I think part of the reason why you gotta learn the history is because you gotta know motherfuckers died for this shit. Right. You gotta know our father gave his life for this. Mm-hmm. He only got how many years of attention? For like three, four years. Right. Three, four years, and by the third, fourth year, he was like, yo, I'm gonna be gone. Right. Mm-hmm. They got FBI files. Yeah, they got FBI files where he in 1968 speaking to Duma Wade, who also transitioned to the essence. And he's telling him, yo, I'm not going to be here in a year. And he's like, what the fuck? Right. G. Khalid, what the fuck? What you talking about? Let me get the gun and get whoever it's going to be. He's like, nah, it, it ain't not a, it's not a problem you can solve that way. That man had some real mm-hmm. vision. We call it clairvoyance, but he had a real keen insight. Because see, Allah, this is what I learned about Allah. Allah wasn't no joke. Allah was a man before he even got knowledge. He had already been to Korea as a war veteran. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He had already saved lives, lived lives, damn near lost his life. And then, you know, he had moved out of Danville, Virginia. He brought that Southern wisdom up to Harlem. And then he lived the Harlem lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So he lit. See, that's the beauty. That's why y'all being here is a beautiful thing. Y'all came from the UK. Y'all right out here in Southwest Atlanta. You know what I mean? Like, this is what make a man complete. It's pain, tragedy, and all that that make a man complete. Without that, you're not a complete man. And you can't teach nobody. You got to have walked every part of the path that you're going to give, that you're going to teach to. Once you get to that mathematics, once you get that alphabet, then you get that student moment and you learn about the people. You work your way, you go to the 136 and you learn about the history. Slave trading, what brought us here, what left us fucked up. Mm-hmm. The, the, the What made us like this, because otherwise, you, what I see with so many original men and women is they don't know why we fucked up. And it creates a low self-esteem mm-hmm. situation where it's like, well, we must be inferior. Right. The white man must be supposed to be helping <laughs> us, because look how civilized he is. He don't kill himself, he right. don't, they don't kill each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. He they blame, eat each other. Blaming each other. They fucking other, right? eat each yeah. other. They kill yeah. their babies and eat their mamas. Right. And, right. and and rape their daddies. Like, this is, the we just got the wrong idea because we watch motherfucking Fox and, you know. Like, what I was saying on the way here, I was like, when we go to the UK, self, I'm, I'm like, yo, yeah, I'm... I'm, I'm saying, yeah, I'm up by flat shows. Um, if I take pictures or I'm filming, they'll be like, yo, that kind of looks kind of hood out there. Like, be careful, be careful. Be ca-. And I'm like, yo, one, I'm not scared of my own people. Mm-hmm. And two, the uh, image you've been sold of black America is way, way off to what it is. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, round where I'm at, cats would more want to finesse me of my money. The state rob, rob me. You understand what I'm saying? Right. The more want to sell me some bullshit weed or something like that. Right. you will more make of a hustle out of it than... Love about you to sleep with the one. And yo, <laughs> I tell you this now, especially in the South, well, I know it's Atlanta. When, when we're in the UK, if we walk in and then uh, you bang into a few brothers, so if you bang into 10, 10 different black people, there could be a, there could, one of them could turn to something, you know what I'm saying? Here, there's more, there's more kind of, um, there's more civilized, people treat each other better here. Mm, really? That is, that is a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You don't realize it, you have it. So you think yeah. there's more animosity between people that look well, like out that way? Because, there's, we've got a smaller community, if one, all right, then if one person's got, a, yeah, if one person's got a job in the council, yeah, you know I'm saying, let's say there's eight black people in there, there's like four percent black workers. Right, just a those small black number. workers, they have to, they, they have to keep their job, you know. And it's, it's like one in, one out. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, so that's where competitive shit. So it's going to be like. There's only ever going to be four or five percent black people mm. ever going to be working right. there, and, the, and they're going to be pitted against each other to compete for that space. You understand what I'm saying? I so do. I do, I do. It's like that with it's like that with everything in the UK. 
to a certain degree. So we got to the one of thirty six, right? So the one of thirty six explained all that. It explained how we was made in the tribes to fight each other mm -hmm. and to sell each other. Oh, all day just grab a glass. Yeah, because please, because we get over here building and stuff, I'll keep pouring. Yeah, it's going to be gone. <laughs> and it's all sweet, I don't taste no liquor. I'm like, yeah, 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 let's keep tossing it back, it's juice. But you know what, this is our culture, see, because the thing is, this is why we escape religion, you know what I mean? Because we're able to be civilized and righteous while we're still doing this, because right. this is this is the way that, honestly, homie, the reason why we can hold our liquor is because we be around 85s, and we got to be able to be amongst them and deal with them and be able to do what they do, it's and we got to be affected by, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, That's right. why you ain't hearing our words slurred or none of that. You know what I mean? Because we done been through this. This is, this is a training that a five percent are really go through. A real five percent is like you know what I mean. That's why God, my brother came out from LA. I and never built with his brother Mark in my life. You know what I mean? Well, we just phone. know each other. Yeah, just uh, the telephone and pure reputation alone. You know, this brother comes highly recommended. You know, and over the years, we've been able to create a camaraderie with each other because we know so many of the same people. But that's the key thing that people need to understand about this te these teachings. We're a nation first. A nation is a brotherhood. A nation is a certain camaraderie. A nation is a people with a history, a language, and a land in common. And the 1 to 14 is a knowledge of a lost nation. Mm -hmm. And it breaks down not only how the devil's society is structured, but it also breaks down how our societies could be structured. When we talk about what is the meaning of the FOI, what is the meaning of the MGT and GCC, we're talking about things that we can manifest within our own personal lives, our families, and our communities, and just in showing how men and women can conduct themselves, right? Mm -hmm. We take it to the 1 to 40. The 1 to 40 give you the knowledge to free to cipher. It show you how the devil was made, or who we was before we made him, mm -hmm. why we made him, how we made him, why things is the way they is, and it give people so much understanding because people are so confused trying to figure out why these people are so inhumane. Mm -hmm. And the reality is we gave them the condition to be such. Right. We didn't give them no other choice to be that because in this world you can't be, you real, real shit, you know what I mean? If you're a white motherfucker watching this, the reason why all your white friends and family don't fuck with you is because the white world is designed to be in opposition to the black world. Right. It's designed that way. So if you were that one white boy, one white girl that ain't with the shit, and you wonder, damn, why my own mama don't fuck with me? Because they still with the game plan. They still playing for team white. Mm -hmm. You not. You might be trying to come over to our side and shit. You know what right. I mean? And right. we still ain't sure where you really stand because we very rarely right. see the motherfucker keep and obey them laws. Right. You know what I mean? Of doing right long term. So that's why we just said, we're not even worried about y'all motherfuckers. As long as we build our own world, we can end the devil civilization in one day without falling victim. How? By seeing ourselves for what we are. We were so lost in the knowledge of ourselves, only getting back to that knowledge and getting back to how it all came to be would really unlock us. What that's for everybody. What do you think of the, the level of consciousness? Because for me, um, in the UK and here, I've seen... I've seen a lot change from, I remember the 90s, the level of consciousness was high. I've seen it stripped right back and I see, I see it coming back up again. Um, do you see this yourself? You see, uh, what do you see on the West Coast? On the West Coast, the, the consciousness is coming back. I mean, as far as these young brothers right now, our young is very, and I think it's really a reflection of us as far as how we taught. There's a certain gap that took place, man, where these young people didn't get it that certain kind of way. You know, um, it's just it's just hard, people. I mean, um, these young boys is uh, really lost in the sauce, man. It's really, my brothers is really lost in the sauce. But in the same breath, they're, it's really reflecting what, what we've done over the years. You know, it's just, I can't even describe where the gap actually took place where Brothers didn't pick up the steam that took place in the nineties. Cause when I got, I we're got speaking to people that couldn't keep up our culture, though. Real shit. Yeah. We're not talking about the masses. Mm -hmm. The people that couldn't keep up our culture, I'm gonna be real. They might not have been meant to. This some shit you gotta self sustain. Ain't mm -hmm. nobody gonna keep you God. Ain't nobody mm -hmm. gonna keep you Earth. And if you got into this to be part of a club or a group. You got into it for the wrong reason, they ain't gonna hold you. Right. You're gonna move on to some other said nation and you're gonna do, go on and do something. Or you might just go on to be a good person. There's a lot of people that's good people right now. Mm -hmm. That's why you see a lot of waves of change happening because you got a lot of older and established people. You know what I mean? You got managers and, and people that's in high position. See, five. Remember the old lesson? What are the 5% dressed like? Right. Some of them are dressed real poor clothes, some are dressed real nice clothes, some in high position, low positions. <laughs> That's real. It is very you know, real, man. The ones I, in low positions, we get to be vocal. Uh -huh. High positions, not so much. Uh -huh. 
But I think that's what makes us so effective is, is that as far as our teachings is concerned, like we was building earlier about us being having a culture and not a religion. So us having a culture, that means that it's a lot of us and a lot of lifestyles, no matter what you're doing, right, wrong, or indifferent. There's a lot of five percenters in that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes us effective because no matter what you're doing, right, wrong, or indifferent, there's one of us there that can teach you the knowledge. Right. Of that's what we do. Everybody <laughs> right about now can say a five percent told them some shit right. that helped them. Yeah. No matter what you I mean, do, right, wrong, or indifferent, that's the jewel. That's the jewel. But at the same time, it could be, you know what I'm saying, that, that five percent is going to gonna pass that spliff and add to the conversation, it ain't gonna be outside the circle. You know what I'm right. saying? I think that's, that's the main yeah, difference. Yeah, we everywhere. We, we in every world. Oh, I'm sorry, man. No, you can't clean up the people unless you get dirty. Oh. But that's what, that's what, <laughs> that's the best way that's I can That's why somebody defined that we not, when, when he said Allah said we not holy. We're righteous. You know what I mean? We righteous because you can't put something holy in the toilet. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But we be in the toilet. Right of of the world, but that's what makes no, us. No, but effective. that's that that's the whole reason why why the father in the nation had that because he was he wanted to be kind of in the streets. He was. That was his life anyway. Yeah, he that was, was his thing. He they wasn't trying to limit him. Yeah, <laughs> they wanted to limit him. He was there already. To him, he was already doing both. I'm over here, and I'm up over here taking care and doing the damn thing. You know what I'm saying? It was the the people with the structure. That was saying, hey, you're over here with us. You can't be over there doing that. It was right. like, work and fuck it. I ain't going to be over here. I'm going to be over here. See, we kind of, I've been saying this lately, man. For those that understand the cycles of history, we in 1966 all over again. You know, it looked like 2016, but only to a new person that mm -hmm. ain't aware of what was going on in 1966. For those that was aware in 1966, you know, see, back then, you had a lot of young men and women running around. They had a little bit of knowledge because Malcolm was popping. You know what I mean? The, the, the teachings was in the streets. But they couldn't be participants in that mass culture because they smoked, they drank, they were right. in the streets, they was and doing that's their how thing. The, the older guards always explained it to me, man. One of the older guards explained it. He said, Islam was already in the streets. Nobody wanted to submit to the regiment of going into the nation and selling the pies and doing all that other stuff. But people were very fond of Malcolm. And because of Malcolm, they was fond of Elijah. Mm -hmm. So everybody wanted to get their hands on the lessons. You and know you what know I'm what's saying? beautiful God, Elijah was fond of us. Yeah. This is what a lot of Muslims didn't realize when they were so angry with Allah. When, when, when somebody finally asked Farrakhan, what did Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, think of the 5%? Elijah said, leave them alone. They studying what I taught and they doing what I said to do. Right. He said, they, they studying the right with the prophet questioning mm. of me. Mm. That's what he said. He said mm. They're studying how the prophet mm. I mean, questioned me, how Allah questioned me. You know, that was the jewel. That was the blessing there. See, we've been keeping up this culture. We never went through no period. When the law returned, we went through about a year of just deep depression, losing our father. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's why a lot of guys are still traumatized from that one event because they lost their father. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some of them didn't have a father, then they got a father, then they lost the father. Mm -hmm. You know? And yet they still kept teaching because 1971, we had the first show approved and we brought the culture back. Right. And ever since then, we've been on it. Right. Was it 1970? No, 71. 71. First show approved. Yes. So... You know, just showing that, like, we're going to be here perennially. We're going to be here eternally. We was here before this. See, this tradition is one where it's really just a way of manifesting the God and man. There's always a tradition for that present on the earth. This is not well known to all people because if mm -hmm. it was, then the egotistical and the weak-minded would use it to be devious. Right, of course. See, see, people use this same knowledge we got, and they use it for financial gain. But the thing about that is it only brings you pain. Not only financial gain, man. You have people now who is using the knowledge for to be put on a pedestal, mm -hmm. to be put on the forefront. That's what we're seeing now. There's a lot of brothers, uh, old The celebrity, so the celebrity country as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, put me on the pedestal. I'm the one. Yeah. I'm the one. That whole mentality. I'm, I, I am glad, though, that in my, like, even like the Breakfast Club or whatever, this, the, the same cats on there, the Farrakhan's, the Umar's, the, yeah. actually, they're getting the floor to speak and they can actually just say, like, yeah, white supremacy, this, that. And there's nobody interjecting or trying to sugarcoat anything. Like, you, Hell yeah, homie, this it wasn't homie, like that before. The, the shit that crashed Netflix, Luke Cage. Right. This Luke Cage shit, they talking about knowledge of self. <laughs> and, uh, da, 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 and everybody with it. Yeah. Yeah. Homie, I'm about to start yeah. wearing a fucking hoodie with bullet, bullet holes <laughs> right, in it. Right? Right, right. Because it's showing that the people is like moving towards, like you got elder scholars like Boyce Watkins and them. 
and they, if you say the black man is God to them, they not gonna say no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They just gonna say, we not ready to tell the people that yet. Yeah. Right. And you're right. We not ready to tell the people that. If you getting this right now, you getting a jewel, right. because you getting something so authentic that this might used to only happen in basements, but now we done, we done established ourselves. God, we done built to be able to be in spaces like this, to mm-hmm. be able to live in spaces like this, and to create realities like this, because we use the mathematics to make real things happen. Because to strip it down, God, when you say that you are God, all you're doing is taking responsibility for yourself. Mm-hmm. That regardless of what happens to me, right, wrong, or indifferent, is based off of my deeds and actions. That's it. Yeah. Woo. That's yeah. it. I am taking responsibility for myself. That victim shit is over. Yeah. That there's no God in the sky making sure I have a good day, and there's no devil in the ground making sure I have a bad day. That all that happens to me, right, wrong, or indifferent, is, is the result of my deeds and actions. Ooh. When you're able to strip it down like that, how can anybody be mad at that? And that's why we take in the masses from that little bit of consciousness that they got to seeing that the next step is righteousness. Mm-hmm. See, we're going to show them that it's more than just knowing about shit. Yeah, you know about the chemtrails. You know right. about the GMOs. You know about the... You know about Fox News and you know about the lies and you know about all the politics that's being played on you. Okay, now you know. Uh-huh. But then you be in despair because like, what the fuck do you do? Right. Oh, now you live righteous. Mm-hmm. This is how you end the devil civilization in one day because you got to end them in your head first. Because yeah. they ever the first devil you head. have to kill is within yourself. Right. Homie, the moment you, every time you're going outside and you're looking at another motherfucker like he a threat or he an enemy, that's devil in you. Mm-hmm. You've been programmed to think like that. That motherfucker might be as scared of you as you is of him. But you can't even accept that reality because you like, I got to process things as an oppositional reality between my own people. Mm-hmm. Be happy you see a white motherfucker in the hood sometimes. This is some sick thinking, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, let's take it to the next level, God, because in dealing with the science of, you know, that we deal with in our culture and everything, God, it's like, you have to understand that. The, the, Satan comes from a Latin word which means an obstacle in your path. Mm-hmm. You make devil every day because as soon as you set a goal, there's said opposition to reach goal. That said opposition is devil. Anything that's going to keep you from reaching the point that you want to do, and we're out here setting goals all the time. Mm-hmm. As soon as you set that goal, you know what else you're doing? You're making devil. Mm-hmm. Why? Because there's certain things that you need to overcome to reach that goal. So devil's necessary. Devil's part of the process. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, ain't no light without dark. Come on. Ain't no up without down. Come on. You gonna accept pleasure, you better accept pain. Mm-hmm. When Elijah came and came with the quote unquote white man as the devil, that was the greatest opposition at the time. You know what I'm saying? He's still an opposition. But think about the other But now we're at the point where we yeah, realize, yeah. oh shit, hold on, look at it that mirror. Like, like, so I see that motherfucker in the mirror. That motherfucker in the mirror, 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 mirror looking right back at me now. But this is the jewel when you get into who is the colored man. Because when you deal with colors, mm-hmm. colors deals with opposition. That's why when you look at sports teams and anything, any people that are competing, mm-hmm. they wear different colors to differentiate different right, 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 from, right. from the side. Contrast. You see what I'm saying? So the Caucasian is just an example. If you see these characteristics in anybody, mm. that's the devil. That's the devil. Is is the devil the reality of opposition? <laughs> like the devil is the thing that causes you to grow. See, we made devil six thousand years ago to give mm. ourselves a chance to become more righteous. See, this this is why I do books like this book right here. This book is all history. All our history, the majority of it, is like literally like two million years of history here, black history. Mm-hmm. And it stops like about 2000 BC, so it barely talk about white folks. Because there's no white history before 4000 BC. Mm-hmm. So I got little mentions of people when you know you start seeing white people coming into the civilization and tearing it up. But the majority of it is our history. You think we ain't had no problems? Mm-hmm. We had droughts, famines, wars, fucking Volcanoes exploding, killing off half the people. How about this? We had people doing fucked up shit. Right. <laughs> right. How about that one? Right. You know, like, for you to think 
that those ways and actions and characteristics that right. he said didn't exist before he right. came, where do you think he came from? Exactly. If you was a person who lied 100% of the time, where did it come from? But yeah. a motherfucker like us that lied some of the time. Y'all yeah, was an original time. man, the father of the devil, and taught uh, the devil to do devilish uh, <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, and that's the real game of it all. Is and this is why we, we ain't anti-white. Oh, pro black, Word. we anti devilish and pro righteousness. And that's because this teaching ain't a teaching that just popped up 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. But it's a teaching of all ages. This is the secret teaching of all ages, Manly P. Hall once said. The secret teaching of all ages is that us being original, us being the source, us being the creator, right? That's the science of the blackness. Is this what you come from? You know what I mean? The blackness reminds you that you're from the source. Just like you was built on the Andaman Islanders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's in this book because. Homie, they jet black. Like, they, they so dark black. I, saw, I had a hard time printing the pictures and shit. <laughs> like, but this is showing you where we come from because that's the fabric of the cosmos, the blackness of space. This is a thing called Bach globules. Look, I'm about to put it in the book. In here, we talk about science and cosmos and all that. This is before even humans was on the planet. I'm talking about when we was here, before there was man to talk about. You know what I mean? Because we was here. We was here as an atom, we was here as a cell, we was here, we was here, we was here, mm -hmm. because we was always here as this. When you die, you're going to be here. You don't got to be a disembodied spirit floating around. That's mm -hmm. what people imagine in their own fantasies. Like, they want to see somebody, so they see a ghost. Right. You want to see a mirage, you see a fucking oasis of water. Mm -hmm. If you want to see something, you can see it. You know what I mean? It's a projection of your own mind. But our permanence is not in being seen, but in our seeing. We the all I see. Mm -hmm. Not just the all-seeing eye, but the all eyes seeing, which means through all eyes we see. Mm -hmm. So we present as the consciousness of all, even what? down to the fucking bacteria. Because, homie, if we all burn down to the ground, we still here. We done seen universes come and go. And it took that brother Farad to come and bring that shit from all the way from the east and bring it to us. And that's why I'm thankful for him, because a lot of times we didn't know what the mission was. Right. For a long time, we didn't know why we got it this way. Homie, like the guy struggled. You know how many gods have committed suicide? Real shit. Because this is not an easy path to live. Word. It's fucking depressing as fuck, to be take, honest with you. You take responsibility for yourself. I'm God. I'm taking responsibility for myself. That's weight. That's weight. To see another person that's supposed to be God and fall short. Come on. And they ain't, they ain't holding you down. like they, they, Now you really by yourself? Come on. Then you go Come back on. to this lesson because we got a lesson to say, I came to North America by myself. myself. So we have something to refer back to to give us perspective. Yeah. That put it in perspective when you see the others fall to the wayside. That's how you know when it's real. You know, I'm I'm an elder and the first one in the community that I come from, and I've seen a lot of people come and go in my community and my my peer group. Right. When I'm around now, nobody is from my peer group. Everybody I've seen come into the knowledge. Nobody is there that's seen me come into the knowledge. Mm. You're the last. Yeah. So, so, that, so that's the nature of this culture. It, it See, that's is. That's the nature of this culture. It we gotta is. appreciate that shit. Bro, like what y'all got, just by you getting that shit from Cypher, even in the parts you got it from, homie, you got something that very few people on your side right. of the country have ever seen. And the jewel is... That's why you're still here. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, But the jewel is, and this is the blessing of these teachings, man, when you realize what type of vehicle that you are, that it isn't about you. It's about where you come from and who you give it to. So that you can have everlasting life. That's the culture you keep by giving it away. That's the way you keep this. You got to give this away. That's why I give it so hard. I give it because I know I ain't going to be sustained if I just have it for mm -hmm. my own edification. I right. got, that's, why I have, that's why I have my family here with me today. Because I want y'all to see that this is the manifestation of the mission and the vision. It's like having an album and nobody, nobody to hear it. Right. What if Thriller never came out and it was just a, his demo that he had in his... With CD or eight track. Exactly. <laughs> I was really saying CD player. And, and this truth is the realest shit ever. This truth is the motherfucking greatest thriller you could ever motherfucking get. Right. When you really understand this shit in context, and then the, what we was about to say about the devil is like, man, a white man is not that big of a fucking deal. He's we have been through worse shit. He's not. He's We've been not. here for hundreds of thousands of years. That motherfucker only been here for six thousand. Only been out the caves for four thousand. Just, just an example. So. He really struggling with his own lack of identity. The reason why they mad is because they don't know who their daddy is. Well, they know who their daddy is. They mad at their daddy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you their daddy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and they lost their mom because they ain't got no homeland. That's right. why they call themselves Caucasian because the last memory is being in the Caucasus Mountains and they don't know where they was before that. Right. They don't know nothing about Pilon, right. Right. which is why we got to teach them. You know what I mean? Right. Why are we here to teach, teach. all the human families of planet Earth? That's why Allah had to take that, that hate out of us 
because we was angry. We was angry like that. You remember with the, the Harlem Six? Come you know on, what I mean? Come on. We was doing the most. Yo, let me tell you, I've heard elders speak about the times when they seen the law walking with uh, uh, Barry Gother and Mayor Lindsay hand in hand in the arms and how that affected them. They was like, yo, like you out here marching with these, mm. you know, like what the law was doing. It was called the sell-out, all the other groups. Yeah, yeah, come on, it was mad in the law. Fucking motherfuckers were trying to kill them for that right, shit. come on. But the law was trying to run his program. He was running his program. He was running his program. He was like, I'm not going to be anti anybody. If you're for me, if you're going to help me add on and do into my program, then I'll mess with you. You know, one of the beauty things, man, and, and this is one of the things that we have to ask ourselves, because one of the things that I love to do when we talk about a law, because a lot of the information that we get about a law all comes from his sons. Yeah. Only testimony that we have of a law physically saying something in his own words oh, is what Bill takes. Yeah. And to me, that alleviates a lot of controversy that a lot of people was dealing with. But one of the, I brought up the Otisville tapes because one of the things that the law did in the Otisville tapes was that he said that Barry Gothard's wife left him because he was a 5%. Oh, really? Yeah, in that tape. He says, yo, his wife left him. You know, why? Because he was a 5%. The law say that. I'm not making this up. He says that in the tape. Translation, he yeah, like, yeah, left yeah. you too much. Yeah, yeah. That's just still going on today. But, but this is, but people out the jewel, though. Because Barry Gother never refers to himself as a father son, mm. but a law referred to him as a father son. You know, so that made me question the just the concept of what it means to be a father son. You mm. know what I'm saying? Because like I said, if you ask Barry Gother, you know who's gone now. But if you ask him, he would say, "Oh no, I'm not a father son." But here we have on Otisville, we have a law saying and referring to Barry Gother as a father son, and saying his wife left him because he's a father son. But I say that to say that whatever role Barry Gother had in a law's life, you know what I'm saying? He considered him as such as far as what he was doing for him and his program and what he was doing. You know, as far so as... So then it makes you think about what it means to be the 5%. Exactly. You know, because a lot of... Because to me, when you deal with the 5%, you're talking about the m minority who deals with truth. Right. You know, when you look at... When you deal with that 16th degree of the 1 to 40, when they start talking about the poor righteous teachers of the planet Earth, they okay, describe, right? yeah, they, 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 who are the poor righteous teachers on the planet Earth? For the, I mean, excuse me, who are the 5% of the poor part of the planet Earth? They are the poor righteous teachers who do not believe in the teachings of the 10%, who are all wise and know who the true living God is, and teach that the true living God is the Son of Man, the Supreme Being, the Black Man of Asia. Those who teach freedom, justice, and equality to all the human families of the planet Earth, um, otherwise known as civilized people, Muslims, and Muslim sons. Now, when you break that degree down, they describe a lot of different people. A lot of different people. You know what I'm saying? You have poor righteous teachers, you know, which are, when I when I think of a poor righteous teachers, I think of Buddha, I think of Jesus, people who are giving it to you for nothing. Mm -hmm. They don't want anything from you. That's I'm just giving it to you. Man, you know what I'm saying? Themselves. Yeah, exactly. To give this to you. Those who don't believe in the teachings of the 10%. You know what I'm saying? Like I would think of a, of a Black Panther. Can we stop for a moment, homie? Do you know how hard it is? To let go of the teachings of the 10%. Come on. Come on. Like to let go of self-hatred mm -hmm. in a real way. To let go of self-doubt in a real way. Mm -hmm. To let go of believing everything that you see and that come into your feet. Because we went from not believing what's on TV to believing what's in our phones. Mm -hmm. You got grown men scared to kill the clowns now because they've seen it on the phone. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I just had my kids bang me in the head with that. <laughs> I was like, what? I was like, like hey, me and the guy just filmed the video. Y'all put on the clown mask and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, baby. Oh, shit, Everywhere. Yo. Mm -hmm. But I, I say all this that when you deal with that 16th degree, it describes a lot of people. So in, 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 in that, I say that there is an exclusiveness that exists to what our teachings is because we are a law's father says. Because when you deal with that definition, like I said, you got the price teachings. We got specific tradition. Yeah, a specific tra tradition. You know what I'm saying? Like when I deal with that and I look at that and... I say, okay, okay, Elijah's talking about his father. Because even in that, you talk about Muslims and Muslim sons. Muslim sons, white folks. You see what I'm saying? So they're describing a lot of different people. Who are we in that? You know what I'm saying? Where are we in that? We are a laws 5%. 
We're the ones that's following his program. That's the, the, the small percentage of people who are dealing with his truth. Right. And that you know, truth is the truth that is lacked by almost 95% everybody. of everybody else. And like we was building earlier today when he was talking about religion, religion across the board has the same moral code. Who and what is God differs. The moral you know code why, Lord? exists. Across you know who the is the world. author of our religions? Who? Motherfuckers like us. Yeah, indeed. That's indeed. the author of all religions. If you look at where all religions come from, it was a brother or a group of brothers involved in raising up a prophet mm -hmm. to teach a teaching that would take humanity to the next, next level, level in the yes. evolution. Yes, yes. Jesus came to try to teach that world about compassion and love because at that time, you got to think it's the Roman Empire. Was there any compassion and, and love in the Roman Empire? And then he comes coming out of Judaism. Not, right. And, that, that, and they the banging on him. There. Right. And they banging on him this, about how you fucking up our traditions mm. the same way the nations was banging on the law about how you messing up this tradition. And then what did Jesus say? I didn't come to break it. I came to fulfill it. Right. right. I came to fulfill it. You see what I'm saying? But there's a there's a a five percent that exists in everybody or across the board because the moral code is the same. If you're a Christian and deal by the you know, oh right. I'm not agreeing with the mystery God signs. I'm talking purely the moral code. Ten commandments, good shit to live by. Yeah. Regardless of who you are, good shit. Good shit. I don't agree on who you see and who and what is God. The moral code is the same. So when we start talking about the 5%, the elite, the people who is following the rules, that's who you're talking about with the 5%. We are Allah's 5%, the Father's 5%. Thank God, do you, you ever worry about dying from this shit? Dying from these teachings? From living this life. I thought it came with the territory, to be honest with you. I did. I thought it just came with the territory. I think that's why it's so rare. I don't have Because who's going to do that? Yeah, yeah. I, I put it to you this way. I don't want to live forever. You know? So my attitude is whatever. The, Why not live with meaning? Come on. Live with meaning. You know? And, and that's, that's what this culture is really about. Because once you move from that victim mindset, that follower mindset, mm -hmm. that I just want to go along to get along mindset, and you encounter something like this, this ain't no easy road. Nowadays, I don't even help people find no gods of teaching. I said, go look around. Just like the brother that gave you the knowledge, he had to fly all the way from the UK to Harlem, just to get it. And I didn't have to fly, fly, fly. I took a five hour flight from LA to Harlem, mm -hmm. to the route. It you goes back to- now, it won't take a 30 minute bus ride. Come on, man. It goes back to uh, uh, one of the things they, um, oh, I lost my thought just that quick, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm feeling I'm nice and saucy right now. Shit, but you quoted that degree shop as a motherfucker. Oh, you know, that come here, man. If you can't give them that degree, y'all, come on, man. If you can't give them that degree. But it took me a few times, I was like, duh, a duh. And then it came out. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker criticize that they can't even be real. You know Come they, on, they, they, don't ain't live, they ain't lived this life long enough. How many drinks did they see me pour before I go do it? Uh, <laughs> Talk turkey, got bacon. Right. <laughs> so what would your message? When's the last time you went to the UK? What, 2005? 2005, man. I can't wait to go back. You need to, you need to come back. I'm looking forward to it. Man. I'm never. We've, we've come yeah. along. We're going together, bro. That's what we're going to work on. Okay. That's, that's the mission. Okay. Yeah. I would love to go because, like I said, my I'm music has been wanting to bring me. Yeah, you do that. I would love for you to come out there. Let's give a lecture before I go. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm I listen, would love that idea. There's, pe there's people we work with who bring other people over from the UK for lectures and things like that. You know so. what we give the people of the UK? We will give the people of the UK the perspective they've been missing. Mm -hmm. Because, see, they are detached people. Right? What happened was they left their homelands because their homelands was oppressed by the devil, right? Mm -hmm. But then they went to a place where the racism and the white supremacy was different, right? And because the UK never focused on a specific campaign of miseducation on the original people, right? Not a specific campaign, you know what I mean? It was kind of implicit. See, mm -hmm. in the West, you was miseducated on purpose. You was taught to be other than yourself. But in the UK, you got people that still got some of their roots. They still got some of their Caribbean heritage. They still got some of their Nigerian heritage. They still got some of that, you know what I mean? That African teaching in their background, but because they detached and they displaced, there's not that grounded perspective to say, why are we here and what are we here for? Mm. Brother. And we're going to give it to them. <laughs> no because question. that's what we're here for. No question. You said it there. That's what we're here for. That's what the 5% exists for. Homie, after I die, it's going to be another one to do the same work I do. That's why I take no problem with this. Because mm -hmm. I love what I do while I'm doing it. I don't need to do it forever. 
Because Allah is one. Allah is one. And all when we start talking about one, you're talking about connection. You know? And connection comes with a lot of things. But our knowledge, knowledge degree, and our supreme alphabet, when you start talking about king, you start talking about lineage. Your father ruled before and before him his grandfather and all thing. And it's the same thing with these teachings. We have the one man that came to us, which was a law in 1964, and we are his sons and descendants. That's knowledge, knowledge. We come from the one. And we and, and knowledge, knowledge bones wisdom. And we will continue the way. I knowledge who is the who's the one, the first one that came. And I, since he's not here anymore, will continue the way. Have you not heard that your word shall be bond regardless of whom or what? And bond is a connection. That doesn't bring us all together right here. A we, connection. We got a blood bond, a physical bond, and a mental bond. Think about the bonds that bring everybody here in this room today. I am connected to him. He said, hey, you guys is over here. They five percenters. You know what? I'm coming. The bond, the connection. I, I've known this brother for some time. It's been a minute. It, we, this is actually the first time we got to kick it physically, physically, physically right. marinate like this. You but think then we've been you guys are here. Years now. But think about. And I ain't seen, I ain't been on, you know what I mean, being on y'all side since right. 2005. But really? think about what we feel just right now, sitting here in the time period that we find, that we've been here together right now. The connection to the one. And our supreme alphabet tells us who's the one, Allah. We all together here because he was out in 64 doing his damn thing. He was doing it for the same reason we are now. Mm-hmm. Because if it wasn't for him, then who would it be? Why? <laughs> Peace, y'all. Peace to the gods. Peace, my brother. Peace. Thank you for the opportunity, y'all. Thank, Thank you very you much, man. Very, very much, man. Very, Peace, very man. much. <laughs> Don't be picking me up and shit make me look small. I'm oh, sorry. Have me in the air and should be like, hey, God was on, the God was on one foot like this. It's it's a all the shit. It's a pleasure meeting yeah, you, so right. really, I really appreciate the opportunity. I didn't that's think I was gonna be out here building like I'm that. I'm listening though, someone camera one. <laughs> oh, that's quality shit, right? Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Y'all was in here feeding me this liquor and letting it just come out. That's how we got it. I believe in that, man. That's good shit, man, right there, it. dog. Man, I ain't built this motherfucking space for nothing. Yeah, come on, man. Peace. If y'all know who I am, it's okay. What I do is I write books to change the hood. And my name is Supreme Understanding because my book's about giving people perspective. The best perspective you can get on things and on life. And that requires us digging a little bit deeply. So my books dig a little bit deeper than any book that you've probably seen before. It's one of them. It's called The Hood Health Handbook. What we did with this book, we got brothers going healthy again. You know what I mean? Because we've been killing ourselves for such a long time that it was time for a change. So when you see a lot of Atlanta rappers start making changes in their life, just know there was brothers like me that played a major role in putting books like these in their hands directly. You know? When you see brothers like my brother Waka Flocka going vegan, you see brothers like T.I. and all of them getting real political, I made it my business to make sure that I influenced the influences. I made it my business to make sure that we got these works into the hands of the minds that was going to be influencing the masses. So when you see us moving towards more political and conscious content in the music out here in Atlanta, just know that this is my work. This is what I do. This is what I'm about. You know, people said they lost all faith in Young Thug. Why? He a young man just like you was once. If they'd have given you a mic when you was 19, 20, you'd have said some bullshit too. So they gave that man a mic and a million dollar check. What you got to give them though is the righteousness to know that there's another way to see life. That's why I made sure I gave my brother a book when I seen him, you know what I mean? Anybody I know that's doing it, I'm putting a book in their hand, I'm putting a jewel in their ear. And that's what you should be doing. And if you need them jewels, that's what we do. Supreme Design Online or SupremeUnderstanding.com, that's where you find the curriculum for changing the world. What I teach is how to create a new reality. And that new reality begins with you. It begins with you changing the way that you think and live. And then by your influence, changing everything around you your family, your circle, your community, and eventually, when you're powerful enough because you've been using these principles to the way that you had that power, you influence in the world. So let's get with this mission. Peace.